Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Gloostick channel. I make videos about Dungeons and Dragons lore full time and have a collection of hundreds of monster ecology and strategy videos on my channel. If you like what I do, please consider backing me on Patreon and subscribing to me here as I upload at least twice a week and be sure to hit that bell icon so you can catch those uploads. There has been a fair bit of interest in the role of time in the D&D cosmology and I've had some requests to talk about time elementals, time dragons and the so-called dimension of time. Well, today I will introduce you to an extremely dangerous and somewhat mysterious creature known collectively as the Fane. Many of you will never have heard of the Fane as they first appeared in the Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition epic level handbook and then showed up again in the 4th edition monster manual. Fanes fall under the rare category called abominations. These are species created directly by the gods and imbued with terrible powers. With no part in the natural order of the multiverse, they are often misshapen, grotesque, and horribly marked from their godly birth throes. The epic level handbook informs us that the abominations came in an overwhelming variety of forms, all terrible. Accursed of heaven and hell, abominations are sealed away for eons at a time. But over the course of time, abominations are sometimes accidentally freed or managed to escape on their own. An abomination's appearance can panic nations, worlds, or entire planes of existence. Thankfully, most abominations remain securely locked away by higher deific degree. Abominations possess the spark of godhood. As such, they are virtually immortal unless slain. They are not actually immortal, but they do age extremely slowly, and they need to eat, sleep, and even breathe so rarely that death from an abomination normally only comes through conflict. Though they are unable to grant spells to followers, some abominations are worshipped regardless, though almost all of them have an undiluted hatred of the gods and all naturally formed creatures. In this particular case, the Fanes are quite intelligent creatures. Fanes are time-lost abominations who diaf whose diaphic parents possessed portfolios relating to time or fate. The origins of them is lost, uh, perhaps rewritten, and they are an existing remnant of a previous multi multiverse. No two Fanes have exactly the same appearance, but all are shadowy and insubstantial. Though it's difficult to pierce the pale shadow of their form, some are vaguely humanoid. All are somewhat bestial and many are outright non-humanoid. Usually are depicted to have two, sometimes more, emerald eyes that burn through their shadowy form. Fanes are not so much captive as lost so far in the past or future that time itself is without meaning. However, Sometimes a Fane escapes into the four dimensions of our multiverse. They don't have any natural ability to travel through time by force themselves in the lore. They usually find themselves uh, caught in the flow of time and travel through some sort of time eddies to uh, gravitate towards events of significance in history. So typically they don't go to or for, from places unless there's some sort of connecting link from the moment that they're into, or it's some significant event in that timeline of that place. Here, Fanes particularly enjoy collecting victims by permanently locking them in temporal stasis. Fanes can feed off the essence of creatures they tempor temporarily trap in this fashion. This seems to be a common trait among many abominations who more often than not only feed for the pleasure of it and not out of any biological need. The Fane consume the lost potential of other creatures that they withhold from living out their normal lives. This is represented in combat by their temporal draining abilities in a way difficult to understand for creatures that can't traverse time freely. Other Fanes are more ambitious and seek to alter the fate of nations, worlds and planes of existence, invariably for the worse, and Fanes are not picky about who they team up with. They all ally with anybody who has the destruction of the multiverse um, or the spreading of chaos as their core motive. The original purpose of the Fanes seems pretty clear. They were agents able to traverse time and either report on the results of a god manipulating reality or to move through a timeline making changes and adjustments. The problem is, of course, how does one control such an agent with such power and freedom? How does one prevent them from becoming a law unto themselves? Given that most Fanes are imprisoned in the era very near the beginning of the multiverse, which makes sense considering this is where the gods would find them the most useful, and that there is at least one clear example in the lore of a being whose powers of time being much stronger near the start of time, this is Yorl, the Slard Lord of Entropy ruler of the plane of Limbo, owner of one of the most powerful weapons in the multiverse, the Black Scythe, named Death. 
This is what issue 221 of Dragon Magazine has to say of your uh, plots and goals. Death, decay and disorganisation are the elements of entropy that Yorl most desires to force down the throat of the multiverse. He believes that his brand of chaos is best delivered to other realms by the truest agents of chaotic neutrality, the Sladi. As the Lord of Entropy, Yorl directs the Death Sladi to organise the mass spawnings of the Blues and Reds in Limbo. These hordes of Sladi are then unleashed on the battlefields of the Blood Wars and the Prime Worlds to incubate the wounded with Sladi egg pellets. Through this uniquely entrepreneurial style, Yorl oversees the ever-growing Sladi race and ensures the spread of chaos. Of all the Slard Lords, the secret of Yorl desires most to discourage the widely held notion that the Lords are actually deities. All Slardi have been commanded by the Lord of Entropy to devour any being who inquires about Slardi de- uh, gods. Yarl, Yarl believes that if knowledge of Slard Lords becomes too widespread, it would reach the ears, the eager ears of multiverse's hothead adventurers out to make a name for themselves, and he can't be bothered with the petty act of slaughtering such fools. Despite his habit of devouring the most powerful Death Slards before they become lords, Yorl has been grooming one Death Slard, Sorrel, as his lieutenant. In the near future, Yorl hopes to unleash Sorrel, the newest Slard Lord, a true anarchist who enjoys employing secret agents to spread anarchy via terrorism and acts of sabotage designed to break down lawful societies. She is quite popular with the leaders of the Revolutionary League, one of the uh, Multiverse's factions, many of whom are often involved in her deadly schemes. This is a perfect group to orchestrate the release and motivate the actions of a rogue Fane to sow complete chaos in an existing campaign, which may involve the player characters somehow being shielded magically at some point when a change to their own timeline occurs, for example, as they exit a dungeon or a wizard tower or a demiplane, and the magical barrier that protects the place from the outside world, they emerge into a new reality, where something very important in their past has changed. Perhaps the former benevolent ruler of the land was killed when they were an infant, perhaps a powerful artifact went missing, and now the land is under the iron heel of a hobgoblin empire. Be sure to provide a clear means to fix the situation, such as a wizard summoning them to help fight the agent responsible, with an exciting magical journey into their world's history, perhaps witnessing first-hand important events and running into figures of legend. Since the characters were shielded from the change in the timeline, they were protected from any paradox that may exist, or that may cause that they may cause, so you don't have to concern yourself with that level of complication. But it might prove interesting to have their existence tied directly to the co- location where they were shielded from the timeline change, and the final battle with a powerful Fane being at that very location, as it attempts to destroy the place and remove them from the campaign world. They may not die, but instead be teleported to Limbo if this happens, just some more displaced flotsam that no longer fits into the rest of the multiverse. They may even face a battle with an otherworldly inevitable agents of law who detect a violation of temporal physics. This is what they do, after all. So there are loads of ways to spin a story like this. Time travel is nothing to worry about in the high fantasy of Dungeons & Dragons. It's quite easy to do. Fanes are elite controllers in combat terms. They have a range of movement options that allow them to evade the player characters. They have means to hamper the characters' um, own movement and slow them down or impair them and move them around. Plus, they have unique abilities that make them very hard to control. This is an attempt, uh, there is an attempt at adapting the Fane to 5th edition, which can be found in the D&D Beyond homebrew section. I'll put a link below in the video description. Shout out to Dr. Dethier for that upload. However, there are a lot of things I'll be adding to it and adjusting, both thematically and because the math is wrong. So, good learning opportunity on how to design a creature's stat block. Grab your DMG for this one. Fane, large monstrosity, brackets, abomination. I know they're listed as unaligned in 4th edition, but they are chaotic evil in every other listing I've seen, and I think they certainly qualify. First is give the Fane a 10 foot reach on its temporal touch melee attack, as it is a large creature and it generally prefers to stay out of melee combat range, so this fits the profile better. Second, increase the number of legendary resistances it has to 3 per day, however, this is where it gets really interesting as a dungeon master, so bear with me, this is how you handle a temporally shifting creature. Long before the whole storyline with the Fane begins, when the player characters are going to encounter the Fane three times, each time it gets increasingly aggressive. So they're going to encounter the Fane 
well before the encounter and the plot with the Fane actually starts. First time it happens, the Fane is seen as the cause of some random event such as a rock slide, collapse of a structure the characters are walking on, or the cutting of a rope that they're climbing up or, or down. The characters will probably survive this event, have no idea what the green-eyed shadow beast was, or where it came from, and where it went to or from. One moment it was there trying to kill them, the next it's gone. They're like, what? The next encounter again, the Fane popping out of nowhere and suddenly attacking them in more direct, and it probably occurs during a reasonably easy fight with some other creature. The Fane appears and attempts to murder them, seemingly an alliance with this creature they're fighting, then it vanishes again. No explanation, <laughs> no idea where it came from. Third time, the Fane may appear while the characters are trying to sleep for the night. It will launch its wizening tempest attack, then race around staying out of reach and hard to see in the darkness, firing its wizening rains, rays. And then, before the characters can get the upper hand, the moment it seems to lose the fight, the Fane is gone again. But here is the trick. Each time it does this, during the lead up to this, up to this moment in the game when the characters are finally confronting it, this is the Fane using its legendary resistance power to travel in time avoiding all ill effect and automatically succeeding on a saving throw, zipping back to some previous moment in time and attacking the characters early in the campaign. Each time it does this in combat, have a portal appear for a split second and describe the scene the players are seeing on the other side of it for just a moment, and they will know that this creature is moving to those previous events and back again as they fight it. This is actually pretty easy to do in a campaign, but when you pull it off and the players see what is going on, they will probably be quite impressed, as it seems to be far more complicated to pull off than it actually is. Like I say, time travel is nothing to be scared of in a high fantasy Dungeons and Dragons game. If, in the last attempt to travel back and kill the characters, the characters actually managed to injure or kill the Fane, no problem. The fight just got easier for them, or they actually already won, but the Fane didn't know it when the fight started. So for, that, for the Fane, it's the present time, wherever it's going. Third, probably a more major alteration to the stat block for the Fane, is they are actually incorporeal. So they have the incorporeal movement trait, allowing the Fane to move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. It takes 1d10 force damage if it ends its turn inside an object or a creature. They also should have resistance to acid, fire, cold, necrotic, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage from any non-magical sources, and have the ability to regenerate 1d10 hit points per round, unless damaged by any weapon that was created in a future time and brought back in time to the current combat encounter. It need not be magical. It does full damage and prevents their regeneration from any damage that it causes, so it functions like a magical weapon to the fame and it also prevents their regeneration. I need to make some serious changes to the challenge rating related stats here. If we flip open the Dungeon Master's Guide to page 274, uh, this should be a very well thumbed page for you. The chart here there for average statistics by challenge rating is absolutely excellent for this sort of thing. We have the features worked out for the Fane. Now we just add the basic combat stats so they make sense in the gameplay. The Fane has an armor class of 20. This is fine. They are fast, agile, and incorporeal. 1d10 plus 60 or between 75 and 210 with an average of 135 hit points. Way too low for CR 17. This creature should have hit points between 311 and 375. And as I mentioned, they regenerate. They were created by gods to be weapons after all. Attack bonus should be lower than those presented, uh, around plus 10, and the dexterity of the Fane is most likely not 30. The damage from its attacks should also be higher. They would leave the, um, I would leave the temporal touch power the same, just increase the reach, bump up Wizening Rave damage to 5d6 plus 10 force damage, requiring two DC 19 constitution saving throws, one to reduce damage by half, the other to avoid becoming sickened until restored by use of magic to remove the condition, as the character has literally had the life sucked out of them, prematurely aged by the Fane. Wizening Tempest is an ability that needs to recharge on a result of 6 on a d6 dice roll, so it should be devastating and should serve to lock down the combat area. The, the 20 foot radius of effect is fine, all targets in that area must make a DC 19 wisdom saving throw or be stunned until the end of the Fane's next turn. They also take 5d6 psychic damage. Success on the save means they are simply sickened until the end of the Fane's next turn and take half damage. 
I would also allow the Fane to teleport 20 feet when this effect goes off as they zip around the combat area. Two attack actions per round is fine, but this should be a legendary creature, so give them legendary actions that they can take at the end of other creatures' turns during the round. I'd also give them two actions. They can either make a bonus temporal, temporal touch with one action, uh, another Wizening Ray with one action, or use both actions to teleport with an opponent up to 20 feet into an unoccupied space. This is dynamite for really taking control of the combat field and serves to keep the melee fighters at a distance. Fanes don't keep lairs and their influence in the territory should be fairly obvious as they have the ability to alter the timeline, so enough said. Just as a side note, they should have Mage Hand as a free spell-like ability that they can use at will. As they are incorporeal, this functions as a low-level telekinetic ability and allows them to just manipulate things. So, there we have it. The Fane. Good luck to your players, they're going to need it. Please hit the like button if you made it this far. Subscribe if you like what I do. Check out my Patreon for some exclusive content and all the full scripts for these videos. Buy some merchandise, wear your geek with pride, and as always... Thanks for listening, and I'll be back with more for you very soon.